This is News 8 This Morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your Tuesday here, 6 a.m. Now, I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Stella Escobedo. Yeah, Netta is tracking our dry conditions. So, Netta, today is going to be warmer than yesterday. So, get ready. It's going to be well above average yet again. That's going to be the story for the week right now looking live towards the east. We have about 40 minutes to go before sunrise. Uh, clear conditions east of our mountains. Not the case though right along the coast. That's where that patchy fog is really lowering visibility today. Temperatures brace yourselves 90s to triple digits for a lot of areas in San Diego. That heat, the dry winds all going to last through at least Thursday. We do get relief by the end of the week though. Here's a look at that patchy fog. Look at how uh, low that visibility is. Kearney made Mesa, Miramar, down to a third mile. Carlsbad, Oceanside, also a half mile visibility. So certainly want to take your time in these spots. Leave a little bit early uh, because it's going to be a little slow going. Red flag warning in effect until 5 p.m. through uh, this afternoon because of the Santa Ana's. Now we're not expecting too strong of a wind event today. 10 to 20 mile per hour winds coming in from our mountains to the foothills, drying things out though. So really it's the wind direction that makes all the difference. And you'll see relative humidity numbers going from the teens today to single digits for a lot of spots by tomorrow morning along the coastline. You're drying out as well. Heat advisory also starting this morning at 10 a.m. because of these temperatures. 98 Escondido, 102 Ramona. Get ready. 100 in Poway, El Cajon, 102. Remarkably hot out there. Eric. It is debate day, a day many voters have been waiting for. Here's a live look from Case Western University in Cleveland, where President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden will square off. Maybe quiet now, but yeah, you can sure bet that the sparks are going to be flying on the stage there very soon. News 8's Evan Ronnie joining us live with a preview for us. Good morning to you, Evan. Good morning, Eric. That's right. The sparks that are expected to fly could be viewed by up to 100 million people. That's the estimate for viewership tonight at the debate. Uh, of course, taking place in Cleveland, Ohio. Ohio being a swing state that both Trump and Biden are hoping to be able to clinch in the upcoming election. We're only 35 days out from Election Day, so tonight is going to be a very important night for both of those candidates. However, the first debate, the first presidential debate for those two candidates is going to look a little bit different than past debates because of the coronavirus pandemic. So things have changed in terms of the debate structure and uh, how those candidates are expected to interact. For starters, that crowd that's usually cheering or booing those candidates, well, That'll be limited to less than 100 people tonight. Uh, plus, Biden and Trump will not shake hands as they enter the debate stage. That, of course, is something that happens after or before every single debate. So Trump and Biden will not shake hands today on that stage. Now, the structure of tonight's debate calls for six 15-minute segments focused on topics that have already been announced by the commission. Those include uh, things like the Supreme Court, COVID-19, and race relations in America. As far as the uh, structure of the moderation tonight. Chris Wallace of Fox News will be moderating that debate. Trump is expected to attack Hunter Biden's record on international work that he's done, Hunter Biden being Joe Biden's son. Trump has also hinted at attacking Biden's mental fitness at the debate earlier on Twitter just a couple days ago. He suggested that uh, the candidates should take a drug test prior to uh, the debate. Biden is expected to focus on the president's coronavirus response and his tax returns that were recently leaked to the New York Times. Now, as far as uh, the actual location goes for this debate, we've mentioned it's in Cleveland. It's at Case Western Reserve University. Security around that venue already extremely tight as it is unknown how many people will be around the venue leading up to the debate. Cleveland's Mayor Frank Jackson says that the city is prepared for protest tonight despite no group securing a permit to protest. The governor of Ohio, Mike DeWine, has granted the city's request to send 300 National Guard members to Cleveland. Unknown, of course, though how many people will pack the streets before or after the debate in Cleveland. But Ohio leaders, both state and local leaders, say they are not willing to take any risks tonight. Now, if you're interested in watching that debate, of course, we are still uh, it's still unknown how exactly that debate will go. However, if you want to tune in, CBS 8 is the place to watch. You can start watching at 6 p.m. That's when the debate starts at 530. Debate coverage will start pre-debate coverage. And then there will also be coverage with Nora O'Donnell, John Dickerson and Gail King after after that debate moderated though by Chris Wallace during the debate itself. It's going to be an interesting one. A lot at stake for both Biden and Trump tonight. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, the response as uh, as to how that uh, that debate plays out. I'll send things back to both of you for now. 
Evan, thank you. The grim milestone in the coronavirus pandemic this morning as the worldwide death toll exceeds 1 million. But the good news is that numbers are less bleak here in the county. Health officials are reporting 124 new cases. That is the lowest one day rise in new cases since June 16th. Now, those cases represent 2% of just over 6,000 tests. SDSU is reporting five new cases, and the University of San Diego is reporting 19 new cases from the end of last week. And right now, we are in the red tier, and in just a matter of hours, the state will release its latest COVID-19 numbers for every single county. Our county narrowly missed being placed in the state's most restrictive tier of purple. But what do we have to do to get into even the less restrictive tier? We're talking about the orange tier. What do we need to do to move down? News 8's Chris Grow breaks it all down for us. Good morning. Good morning, Stella. Well, one of the things that could end up helping us in the future is a key metric here. And obviously, a lot of criticism has been lobbied at the state for some of the metrics they do use, don't use, and then come up with later in the game. Well, there have been basically aids that counties, if they achieve certain numbers with testing or putting testing in areas that have been hardest hit, they can get somewhat of a bonus if you think about it. So some percentage points off their case rate that could help us in our journey to orange. However, that metric hasn't been put into place yet. We believe that we're going to find a, a metric working with those counties that not only can be implemented, but through uh, the tremendous effort that we're already seeing and building on that, that each county can be successful. So this is what needs to happen for us to move into that orange tier based on what's available now, not going to change later. We need to have a rate case rate of 3.9 or less, but for 21 days in order to move into the orange. That's less than 133 new cases a day, a number that we originally just hit. So this could be something we potentially see happen in November. But again, it's going to take 21 straight days. But let's go back to that metric the state could help us out with. San Diego County wants to have our case rate lowered for credit to setting up testing sites in hard hit communities. It's something the state said could happen and they called it an equity metric, but it's something that hasn't happened yet. It would artificially lower our case rate. But as you just heard that state official state, it's something that's only going to happen after they speak with county health officers. So for the time being, we need to pay attention to getting that case rate below that 3.9 or below. That's what can happen right now. So outside of worrying about what the state can do to help us getting that case rate at 3.9 or lower for 21 straight days, that's going to be how we move into that less restrictive tier. It's something that could potentially happen in November with the way that things are going. But again, it's not something now that remains uh, a possibility uh, either today or next Tuesday, something that also can't happen today. We won't be moving into that purple tier. If our case rate is at seven or higher, we need to be at that case rate for 14 straight days. This Tuesday would only be seven, but it's something we need to pay attention to next Tuesday. Eric and Stella. Chris, thanks for that. As San Diego Unified officials figure out a way to reopen schools, hundreds of local parents have signed a petition asking the district to hold off for now, saying it's not safe. At this point, no reopening date has been set, but the parents who started the petition say they want the district officials to consider more of the science before making any moves. Uh, some of these parents fear if the schools reopen too soon, cases will spike and they'll have to shut down again. We're countering the opinion of a group of parents who are saying open these schools yesterday for everybody. We're saying, wait a minute, slow that down. We recently told you about that group that wanted to reopen the schools quickly. Among the reopening criteria, they'd like to see a 14 day countywide case rate of less than 100 cases per 100,000 people and fewer than seven outbreaks over a seven day period. Currently, our case rate stands at 102 and our outbreaks are at 18. Meantime, Play on San Diego playgrounds at the city of San Diego parks are getting ready to reopen on Facebook overnight. Mayor Kevin Faulkner said he's directed staff to prepare playgrounds for a safe reopening based on new guidance from the state. That includes face coverings for anyone two years and older. No food, no drinks at the playgrounds, washing your hands or sanitizing before and after visiting. An official reopening date will be announced very soon. I know a lot of parents are excited for that and kids too.
Yeah, schools within the Grossmont Union High School District will reopen for in-person learning today. It's the first time the district schools will be open to in-person instruction since March. This comes a day after the district moved into phase two of its reopening plan. Students will either participate in a blended learning model or remain fully distance learning. More details will be given at a media conference this morning. That starts at 8 at Santa Ana High School. Meanwhile, the North County parents are keeping up their fight to bring their children back into the classroom. Parents from the Carlsbad Unified School District will protest again today. That's going to happen at 8 o'clock this morning. Families will bring their Chromebooks to do their schoolwork together outside of the Carlsbad High School there. This follows the district's decision to cancel the October 13th reopening date for middle and high schools. 6-11, time for your morning rush now. A suspected serial arsonist allegedly responsible for a series of fires in Chula Vista is set for arraignment this morning. Police say 33-year-old Alejandro Gonzalez admitted to setting several fires in the river bottom over the last few months, including at some playgrounds here. He's also suspected of dozens of other fires, including one at Veterans Park and East Lake High School. His hearing is scheduled for 10 a.m. at the South Bay Courthouse. Police are now asking for the public's help in identifying looters who targeted La Mesa four months ago. The looting caused millions of dollars in damage and destruction. These are some of the images they released here of people they say are persons of interest in the looting. Take a good look at your screen. They're up right now. This uh, happened at Pierre's Jewelers on La Mesa Boulevard. These are some of the people who may have been involved. In the weeks to come, La Mesa police plan to release surveillance photos and video from other crime scenes that night. Anyone with information can either contact La Mesa police or Crime Stoppers anonymously. The medical examiner is working to identify a woman who was run over and killed by a construction tractor while she slept in the sand at an Oceanside Beach. It happened around 10 a.m. yesterday. We brought it to you as breaking news here. The 25-ton tractor was carrying pipe from the harbor dredging project nearby. The driver says he didn't see the woman and thought he had hit a rut. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say the driver has been cooperative and they do not believe he was impaired. New developments in the fatal shooting that happened in Barrio Logan. The woman who was shot to death has been identified as the search for the gunman still continues this morning. Police say 36-year-old Stephanie Kinman of National City was shot near a pizza restaurant on Dewey Street near the Five. It happened after she and her male companion were involved in a fight with a man and another woman. The shooter is described as a man possibly Hispanic in his mid-20s, about five foot eight, with a medium build. And we have new developments this morning in the Breonna Taylor case. Recordings of the grand jury proceeding will now be released to the court this week after an anonymous juror filed a motion requesting the sealed records be released. They argue that they are a matter of public interest. No officers were directly indicted in Taylor's death. This all comes as newly revealed body cam video shows a possible violation of police policy following the raid on Taylor's home and that video released by Vice News there. Now for a look at how the roads are shaping up on Tuesday, here's Jenny Mokowski. Well, we are dealing with that SIG alert that I mentioned in my last couple of reports here, and it really is impacting your drive on the northbound side of the 15. You'll notice uh, right near that exit to the 8, Elena's block, so that's where that SIG alert is issued. I am being led to believe that this is actually pretty close to being cleared away because that delay I saw has completely dissipated. We're down to about 10 miles an hour. Things were backed up from about Adams Avenue, but again, I think that they're close to clearing that SIG alert. On the 8 eastbound side right near College Avenue. Looks like that fifth lane is still blocked. We've got an obstruction on the road way over to the east here in Hamul. Single lane is blocked at Rancho Hamul Drive because of a stalled car, but your travel times are fine. Speaking of travel times, a little foggy along the coast, but other than that looks good. Looks like a new crash popped up in Ramona, so I'll have details on that in my next report. Okay, Jenny, thank you. Next, thousands more people in Northern California have been evacuated because of the fires as a Northern California fire has raged in size. State of emergency now activated. Plus, a red flag warning in effect today as the Santa Ana winds return. Net is tracking all of our conditions.